Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Friends and family are coping with the loss of a man killed in a hit and run in Lexington over the weekend. We'll hear from the victim's friend coming up next. They say he was a great leader and a true friend. Teammates of a University of Pikeville player killed in an ATV crash are remembering him. And WKYT tracking a developing standoff situation this morning in Sydney, Australia. One of those stories and more and breaking news as it happens. It's coming up on WKYT this morning. An early good morning to you and welcome. It's good to have you along here at 430. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Welcome in. Happy Monday. And I hope you had a good weekend. Glad to have you back. <laughs> good, good to yeah. be here. Yeah. yeah, a little long weekend for me. <laughs> <laughs> for the first track on the weather, let's turn to meteorologist Micah Harris, see what our weather has in store. Well, it looks like a mainly dry day across the bluegrass state. We look across the region, even some mild temperatures sliding into the region. And you can see First Alert Defender live radar. There you are, a nice clean sweep. Not much going on. And as we look across the area, temperature wise, upper 30s, lower 40s. We're at 41 degrees in Lexington. That goes for Mount Sterling, 38 there in London. And Somerset coming out at 36 degrees. Today's forecast 50 degrees. Late rain moves on in. And then we have a big system really working in throughout the weekend. I'll really go over the latest details coming to you in just a few minutes. All right, Michael, we'll see you in just a bit. And let's get everybody up to the minute on the news this morning. A fire that destroyed a Powell County home over the weekend has displaced the family living there. Firefighters went out to a trailer on Bright Street around 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon. No one was home when the fire started. WKYT's Jordan Valines found the homeowners and was there as help poured in. Larry Moorefield didn't want to believe what he heard. He called me and told me. But it was it was on fire. Didn't want to believe what he saw. I was, I got to the school up there and I seen the smoke. But the harsh reality of the news sunk in. I just got I'm mean, sick in my stomach. It just just sick. As he stood before what was left of the home that he had left only hours before. That was all we had. Moorefield and his wife were running errands Sunday afternoon when they got the news that their trailer where they'd lived for the past 12 years had caught fire, destroying almost everything they owned. We got some pictures and stuff, but they'd all burn up. But as the hours passed by... Sitting in my car, I mean, that's, you know, that's all I can do right now. Help began pouring in. Uh, we got hold of the Red Cross. We're going to be staying here at the local motel. Uh, the community also uh, got them some clothes for tonight. And, and although the Morpheus aren't sure what their long term plans will be, they do plan to take things. I would just have to start all over. That's, you know, that's all we can do. One day at a time. In Powell County, Jordan Valines, WKYT. No one was injured in the fire. In Lexington, several families had to stay somewhere new last night after an apartment fire damaged their homes over the weekend. Firefighters were called out to an apartment complex on Donnabrook Court around midnight Sunday. We're told the fire spread through the building, damaging two floors of apartments, including the basement. Crews say a man inside a top floor apartment was cooking on the stove when he fell asleep. That's when the fire spread from the stove to the wall and then through the ceiling of the apartment. When I first got up, uh, the railing, the paint on that railing was burning. That's how hot the fire was. And uh, downstairs and upstairs, the, the shutters were burning on the building. Firefighters say working smoke detectors helped to save that man's life. New this morning, Lexington police are investigating a violent robbery that happened overnight at the Sportsman's Motel on Winchester Road. Police say a man walked into the woman's room and hit her in the head with a baseball bat. They say he then stole her phone. Investigators describing the man as weighing around 100, uh, 240 pounds with reddish hair and was he was driving a red Hyundai Sonata at the time. Friends and family of a man killed in a hit and run are remembering him this morning. 23 year old Jacob Hamilton died Sunday morning. The Fayette County Coroner says Hamilton was close to the bus stop on Liberty Road last night when a driver veered off the street and hit him. Crews rushed Hamilton to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Friends paid tribute to Hamilton yesterday. I'm going to try to remember all the good things about him. Because he was just a wonder, wonderful individual overall. You could be having the worst of days and see him and your day would just turn around. 
The driver later called police to turn himself in. They have not filed charges against the driver. They say they are still investigating. WKYT News has learned the name of a man who died in a crash in Anderson County over the weekend. The Anderson County coroner tells us that Logan Driscoll was driving down Wildcat Road when he crashed and was ejected from his vehicle around 8 o'clock on Saturday night. We're told that Driscoll lived on that road. Driscoll was pronounced dead at the scene. His body has been taken to Frankfurt for an autopsy, and Kentucky State Police are still investigating the cause of the crash. The University of Pikeville is mourning the loss of an athlete today. Tyler Williams was injured in an ATV accident Friday afternoon. He later died from his injuries. Williams was a baseball player at the University of Pikeville and a football player and baseball player at Belfry High School. His coaches say Williams was competitive, team oriented, and always gave 100%. He's a fighter. He, um, he competed with his own man, but he always competed the right way. Um, and even with the accident, he, he was fighting the whole way. And the university will hold a public memorial service today at 5 at the university chapel. We have some new developments overnight on a hostage situation that continues to unfold in Sydney, Australia this morning. The situation began around 9 o'clock our time last night. A single gunman is holding hostages at a coffee shop in the heart of Sydney's business district. Police have had contact with the hostage taker, but they are not saying anything about his motives. They say he has demanded an Islamic state flag as well as a phone call with the Australian Prime Minister. We'll have the latest on this story this morning as it develops. And police say it was an ex-boyfriend who was arrested for the death of a young mother in Louisville. Metro police investigators say Deshaun Dorsey killed Portia Mills Friday near Churchill Downs. Police found Mills' two-year-old son in the home with his mother's body. Family and friends are now raising funds for Mills' funeral expenses and her son Jaden through the GoFundMe uh, site. The toddler's grandmother says that she does not understand why anyone would do anything like this. I really trust God that he's going to make it's going to be okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. This baby is going to get the best life possible that I can give him if it takes the death of me. But I want to know, Deshaun, why would you kill his mother? Dorsey is charged with murder and he is set to be arraigned today. We are learning some new information about an officer involved shooting in Bowling Green. Our affiliates there say police were called out to a sporting goods store after a man tried to shoplift a rifle. State police identified the man as Elliot Cummings. Store employees say they saw Cummings leave the store with a rifle in his pants. We're told he reached for his waistband while fleeing, and a Bowling Green police officer shot him. Cummings was then airlifted to a Nashville hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The officer that shot Cummings, Clifton Phelps, has been placed on administrative leave. The man accused of killing an Ohio woman is set to face a judge today. Ohio police say Daniel French killed 87-year-old Barbara Howe back in uh, 2012. French was arrested in Rockcastle County last Wednesday. State police say they got a tip on French's whereabouts and arrested him. He faces several charges, including murder and abuse of a corpse. He's set to be arraigned this morning in Rockcastle County. We have a reminder this morning for drivers in West Lexington. Later today, crews will pick back up blasting at New Circle at Old Frankfurt Pike. That work is part of an ongoing widening project between Versailles Road and Leestown Road. Each time a blasting operation occurs, the roadway in that area will be shut down for around 15 minutes. The blastings are scheduled to take place around 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., noon, and 1.30 this afternoon. We have a traffic alert that will impact drivers in downtown Lexington. The next phase of the Center Point project will kick off this morning. It could bring traffic delays with it. All lanes of West Vine Street will close between South Upper Street and South Limestone starting at 9 a.m. and will remain closed until 9.30. An additional lane of West Main will be closed all day between Limestone and Upper. Two lanes of West Main Street will remain open. Police say they'll be out directing traffic all weekend long. And this, of course, is to bring a huge crane in mm, to uh, begin yes. the next phase of uh, the project there. Yeah, All right. quite an event there. Yeah. Time this morning is 439 and WKYT this morning and your Monday is just getting started. Holiday traditions are more important than you may think. Moms Every Day has more after the break.
And the temperatures outside, 30s, 40s as we head toward the afternoon, right around 50 degrees. And then we start to see it really pick up as we work our way into the night. And that's system after system after system. And I'll explain those details coming up next.